Evening guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about 18th century clothing. Stay with me. Alright, so as you probably know, you know, there was a pretty big variety of clothing that were uh, worn and used during the period. And uh, like I said, I think in a previous video, I'm not trying to be so period specific, but yet I am going to try and do my best to keep it as, peri as period as I can. Um, some things I think that, you know, people overlook were, you know, customizing clothing as well as gear and things like that to suit your needs and make it, you know, more comfortable for you, maybe more fashionable in, in some instances. Uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the long hunters and, and people like that that kind of got embedded with some Indian tribes and things like that kind of took on some Indian customs and uh, incorporated, you know, some clothing, tactics, you know, things of that nature, you know, from the different tribes and vice versa, you know. You started seeing tribal members wearing, you know, western type dress and mix and match in that way. Uh, some of it traded, some of it gifted, you know, things like that. So again, there was a wide variety. Uh, I'm going to kind of do me, if you will, like I said I, in a past video. I'm going to kind of do what I like. Some of it that was, you know, close to home. I am going to do some long hunter stuff as well. But uh, I'm going to mix it up and, and I'm not just trying to portray, you know, one persona, I guess you could call it. So uh, I got some different things as you're seeing laid out here on the blanket. Uh, I've laid them out on the table now. We're going to talk through those uh, piece by piece. Uh, tell you guys and show you guys what I have uh, for clothing and stuff like that so far. Uh, a lot of it purchased. Some of it I've made. I'm going to continue to make my own stuff as well uh, to include, you know, shirts. I may give the fall front breeches a go. They look a little bit tricky, but hey, you know. I may, may give that a go here yeah, yet, yeah. but a uh, ton of projects to do, and uh, we're just getting going here in this series. So let's start out, I guess, with what I'm wearing now. Uh, we'll work our way, you know, from the shoes up. All right. So obviously, said. the leather straight lasted shoes uh, with the brass buckles. If you guys have seen in past videos, uh, I have a few pairs of socks. The ones I'm currently wearing are a cotton, uh, I got a couple pairs of cotton, a couple pairs of wool, you know, obviously for different times of the season. Working our way up here, I've got on the classic fall front breeches, breeches they come down to the knees, they have buttons on the side, and again the fall front, you know, I guess this is more your 18th century style fly front, <laughs> but uh, it's got the three buttons and you just undo these and it flaps down, you know, easy to go to the bathroom, stuff like that. And again, pewter buttons there. Uh, and they've got some usable pockets on the side, also pewter buttons there. And then in the back, they uh, have a lacing, and that's how you adjust them and tighten them, you know, to fit. Moving you. on up, we have a classic waistcoat or waistcoat as they refer to it as uh, does have a couple small pockets here in the front again pewter buttons all the way up I opted to go sleeveless uh, you can get you know waistcoats with full length sleeves and such um, I opted to build the vest style um, just a regular you know work type shirt underneath that uh, this one happens to be Osnaberg uh, both of my shirts, or all three I should say, the, the brown uh, hunting shirt that you guys have seen in past videos and we'll get to here again in a minute. Uh, all three of my shirts are Osnaberg, uh, and as well as the breeches. I uh, just prefer it's a little bit softer. Um, linen's fine too. Uh, you can get the stuff in wool, canvas, you know, whatever you want. But uh, I personally prefer the Osnaberg. I just think it's it's a good material. Seems pretty rugged enough, and it's uh, pretty soft, like I said. 
So again the waistcoat, uh, it's got the little tail on the back, pretty common. And then up to the headgear, have on your classic uh, flop hat if you will. Um, this particular hat came a lot bigger, I'll show you the piece that I cut off it here Real in a little quick. bit. But before I forget this for you guys, here's the uh, extra piece. Uh, extra piece what came with my hat so uh, it was pretty big as you can see um, I definitely don't like my hat that big so uh, I trimmed it down which was also typical uh, everybody didn't wear the big wide brims or roll it up or make a tricorn out of it I uh, again customizing your stuff they come really big and Without cutting it, you can turn this into, you know, a tricorn hat was, which was actually wore during the period as well. I just made a custom leather sweatband for mine. Cut some tassel on it on the back. You know, customize your stuff. Like I said, again, you know, again, I think that's kind of overlooked. You know, certain things of the period. Yeah, okay, it's period, but. It doesn't have to be so exact because people of the time certainly custom customized uh, their clothing and their gear, as I mentioned already. So I, I intend to do the same. I noticed, you know, a lot of, or well, some of the long hunters, I shouldn't say a lot, kind of cinched up, you know, their shot pouches and powder horns almost to like right under their armpit. And that's for moving through the woods and, you know, if they had to beat feet and get away from an attack then have the stuff flopping all over the place while they're running kind of stayed put and they were able to move out uh, and keep that stuff pretty close to them without losing anything so again customize your stuff so uh, let's head on over to the table and we'll talk about what we have there alright so working from my left to right probably your right to left I will kind of start off at the bottom and work our way up here again uh, right in the front here all I have is a loincloth. It's just a 12 inch piece of leather. I've got two made out of leather. One I've already customized as I talked about. Uh, just a 12 inch piece of leather. And I've read in certain places that kind of a common size was, you know, 30 inches long to, you know, however wide you need it to fit you. Uh, length should apply to that, I would think, too. And uh, I think it. It definitely does because I ran into a problem with that 30 inches doesn't even fit me and I'm a small guy mine actually happens to be 48 inches long by 12 um, so is this one here and uh, again this one's been customized for me uh, after some use with it I haven't got a ton of use but uh, knowing that the summer months are coming up and it's gonna get pretty warm out I hate stuff rubbing in between my legs and essentially you know this flaps over in the front you tuck the rest under you and then it flaps over in the back you know kind of like that so you get all this material that bunches up in between your legs and uh, if you get to sweating or doing a, a long trek or a scout or a hunt something like that and that thing's rubbing on you wearing out your legs uh, I don't prefer to rub tallow and anything like that in between my legs, <laughs> but some people do, I guess. But uh, that's it. So I customized mine. Maybe I'll show you that. <laughs> Maybe I won't. Uh, again, it's custom for me. Definitely, probably not period, but again, customizing your stuff to make it work for you, I think is key with all this stuff. So uh, to go with the loincloths, uh, breech clouts, breech cloths, whatever you want to call these. Uh, leggings were typically worn. I have a couple pairs here that I made myself. Uh, this first pair is a set of side seam leggings with fringes uh, for the colder months. Um, and they're out of wool. This next set I made Our leather center seams. So 
So you wear the seam in the center, then you have a little leather wang or thong that ties up to your leather wang or thong that goes around your waist to hold your uh, loincloth or breech club in place. So uh, these are my favorite pair by far. Uh, very comfortable. Then I just have some more wool underneath. Seeing I've made a couple pairs, uh, we're going to do that on video uh, at a later date in another video. So I've got a couple pieces of uh, wool just cut out, ready to be you know, fitted and sewed up. So uh, we'll do that together again in another video. Uh, some shoes I've, I've shown in another video as well, I think. Uh, a couple pairs of moccasins that I made. These ones happen to be elk hide. Uh, and these ones are some cow hide that I had. They're a lot lighter weight, but uh, they're going to be good, you know, in the hot weather. So, uh, and then come out too bad. Alright, to go with uh, leggings, usually worn up around the knee, um, is what they would call a garter. So these just wrap just below the knee to help hold up that top part of your uh, legging. Uh, and we'll get to these. I'll show you guys, you know, what some of that stuff looks like, you know, later on in the video. Uh, back to the socks, regular socks. I have uh, the brown pair of cotton on. I have a off-white pair of cotton and two brown uh, wool pairs of socks. Moving over to the pants again, just another fall front pair of breeches. These are in brown. Again, with the ties on the back, you can see. Uh, same thing that I have on, just in brown, so I can mix it up. You know, brown, brown pants, white socks, you know, so on and so forth, and kind of you know retentive when it comes to matching. I think, but <laughs> that's just me. All right, again. Another Osnaberg shirt. This one has a full collar opposed to the one I'm wearing that just has a you know a, a small collar on it. Uh, and back to the buttons again, these breeches, all pewter buttons. This Osnaberg shirt has a a wood button. The one I'm wearing, you can't see it now, but I wanna say is an ivory button. So there was definitely different, you know, button styles and button choices to go with uh, back in the period. Then in the front I have my uh, hunting shirt. You know it's got the ruffles and stuff like that. Whatever you want to call that. The cape on it. Some fringe to it. Uh, very nice shirt. I like that a lot. Uh, but that's my hunting shirt. And then the other hat that would have been period is just a wool knit stocking hat. You know for the cooler time of year. And then some neckerchiefs right here. So let's talk about these. All right, so neckerchiefs can pretty much be anything. Um, you know, anything they had in the time, linen, canvas, whatever you wanted to use for that. Um, a couple different styles. Uh, this first one is actually silk. Uh, it's pretty big. And there was different ways they fasten these, you know, roll them up, triangle, put them around the neck, tie them in the front, you know, so on and so forth. I personally ain't a big fan of anything being around my neck, so uh, I definitely don't wear them. This is another style, it just has ties on it, so you could, you know, put this on, tie it, spin it around, and it kind of just you know covers the neck and it would tuck into your shirt just a little bit uh, very very popular actually back in the time uh, not everybody wore them but uh, they were definitely very popular and uh, unlike today you know back in the period people were a lot more conservative than today you know there was no yoga pants and stuff like that uh, pretty much everybody was covered up even you know to have company come to your house you know, for a meal or drinks, or just, you know, hanging around, talking, stuff like that. Uh, not even just the women, but even the men would uh, cover up. And that what I'm wearing would be pretty typical of that, you know. So if I were to have company come over, 
uh, everything I'm wearing, even up to the waistcoat, was actually worn when company was here. Uh, they wouldn't really just walk around in a shirt. And the shirt basically doubles as nightwear. Uh, they'd wear that to bed because it's long. It uh, comes to just above the knees. Uh, underwear is not worn because your shirt kind of makes up the underwear being that long uh, as well. So uh, again, just conservative. Uh, a lot of the females, same thing. They would pretty much cover up everywhere to include some type of headgear. Uh, uh, and that's just kind of the way it was. So uh, that's it on the male side of thing. I'm going to uh, change out, kind of show you what the leggings and the breech cult look like. Uh, you know, nothing that shouldn't be shown on a video or TV or something like that. You know, so don't go there. But I'm going to try a couple different things on, show you guys kind of what that looks like, how you put it on, uh, things of that nature. And then at the end of the video, we're going to run through. Uh, what Marie has, my wife, uh, what she's got for an outfit or two, uh, and how she wears it, and, you know, again, pretty typical of what women of the 18th century would have worn. Alright, so what I'm wearing now, obviously, the hat, I've got just the shirt on, that could be a hunting shirt. Now, uh, in some cases, it's shown that the shirt could have been split up the middle, uh, but not all cases so this shirt as a hunting shirt would work just as well uh, well the hunting shirt that you've seen in past videos the brown one would also work obviously uh, so just the shirt uh, typically they'd wear a sash which is what I'm wearing now around my waist uh, which would enable me not only to keep my shirt you know tucked in tight so it's not flopping in the breeze but gives me a spot to put my belt knife if you will uh, and typically tied off in the back so that knots you know out of the way here so let's uh, move down I'll show you I get on the leggings moccasins and I actually have the custom breech cloth that I made so uh, we'll All show right, you so that. here I have on the center seam leggings and again we talked about the garters that would put on just like the sash around my waist you know from the back back around knots tied in the back uh, in some cases I've seen people with custom ones that just go around and tie right here in the front and they're done uh, because they're just that big. Uh, these are big enough where I go around twice. Again, center seam legging with my center seam moccasins that I've made. Alright, so now with, without you guys thinking I'm being fresh here. Take off the knife and the sash. So, my breech clout is, like I said, this one's a foot wide as well. It covers, you know, the better part of my legs uh, as well. Some people go a lot narrower. Uh, I chose to go a little bit wider. Uh, on the sides, like I said, on my center seam leggings, I attached just a leather thong that comes up and attaches to the thong that I tie around my waist to keep my breech clout on. So I'll then come up, it's held there, and then again with the garter, as we talked about already. So this is actually extremely, extremely comfortable. <clears throat> and uh, again, on my custom one, I'm not gonna, I'll spare you guys that, <laughs> but uh, let's just say underneath you know the flat pot in the front and the back do this without pulling it up on you we'll just say that it's custom fitted to me and we'll leave it at that again I just think that you know the full material though if and when I make one of these out of wool uh, if you plan on wearing these you know in the fall time and on into the winter I know guys that wear these year round uh, Mark Baker's definitely one that wears these, you know, year round even in the snow. But if you go with a wool in that case, maybe it ain't so bad when it's bunched up. But like I said, you would take this, put it up under that thong, flap it over to your desired length, then the rest of this pulls through the back and does the same thing. Goes 
up under the leather thong that goes around your waist and again flaps over in the back but with this you can see that it's got a lot of bunching up going on right there and uh, maybe it's different with wool I haven't tried it yet but I know with this especially when it gets really warm outside you know a little moisture going on down there and long treks and scouts stuff like that that stuff gets to rubbing on the inside of your legs uh, I don't know about you but I definitely don't like that so I went with a custom fit alright guys that was pretty much the clothing that I have uh, so far and what I'm going to be using uh, just real quick another thing with the leggings uh, they were actually worn with breeches too uh, how they would do that uh, you seen how I had the leather thong that came up and attached to the thong that went around to hold up my breech clout. Uh, you have these pewter buttons here on the side down by my knee like I showed you. Uh, you could attach another button depending on how high your leggings came up. And um, they could just have a slit in the legging to take to one of them buttons or put a button right on the legging and uh, fasten it that way. Yeah, that's pretty much you know the male side of it uh, so let's take a look and see what Marie's wearing and uh, talk a little bit about that all right guys so obviously just like the men's side of things there was a lot of different fashions for the women of the period as well uh, but we'll just run through what Marie's wearing real quick uh, and show you that so from the floor up she's also wearing a straight lasted women's leather shoe uh, with ladies buckles Again, the straight lasted brass. women's leather shoe with the ladies buckles that are brass. And she's got on a cotton clocked sock to go with those. She's got on a maroon petticoat. She has one in blue as well, I believe. What falls underneath that, which is kind of the same as the shirt which I explained to you guys, is just a cotton chemise. Uh, it doubles down as a nightgown as well, just like the men's shirt does. Uh, over that, She's got an English bodice, which is like a vest pretty much, ties in the front. Uh, her chemise is ruffled, uh, you can get it without that. And then she's just got a country cap on as well. And that pretty much makes out her outfit. Uh, it was typical in the time to wear double petticoats so you could mix and match colors and wear one a little longer than the other and things of that nature, but uh, this is what Marie's got on today.